My name is Tom Gilbert. I'm a professor at the Natural History Museum of Denmark, and we've just finished our research into the genetics of the giant squid. There's really three reasons why the giant squid is so fascinating to me and to many other people. Firstly, it's a sea monster. It's the, the monster of legends, the kraken. Many people want to know what it is. Secondly, it's a Danish story. Jepeda Steenstrup, who in the 19th century was the most famous basic biologist in Denmark and maybe to today, he worked on it, he described it, he said this sea monster is actually a, a giant squid. And thirdly, these things live in the deep dark oceans where we simply can't look at what's going on. We, we know nothing about them because they're so hard to see. So it's the combination of the legend, the, the, the particular description in Denmark and the unknown. So what we've done in our study is use a genetic approach to try and understand more about them. And put very, very simply, we find that no matter where you find the giant squid, they seem to be one big population that's moving everywhere. It's, it's, it's not many subpopulations. The giant squid everywhere are the same creature. This means it's almost certain that they're only one species, and it means that they probably move all over the world continually in between every generation. So getting the material for this project was, was not straightforward. We are in Copenhagen, the, should we say, spiritual home of the giant squid. This is where Stainstrip did his work. We have the type specimens here. They're actually sitting behind me right now. We have a number of samples that were found. But many of these were collected in the 19th century, and they've been stored for a long time, may have been in formalin, and they're very hard to work with the genetics. So although we had material here, we had to sort of search widely to get more, in particular to get material from around the world so we could say we were looking at the global population. So to do this, we teamed up with people in basically all around the world. We had samples come in from museums in Australia, in New Zealand, in the Americas, in, in Spain, and so on. And we built this sort of global database of pretty much every good quality giant squid we could get our hands on. And using that, we could really look at what you know, is giant squid like around the world. Our, our observation that they seem to be one single population really requires reflection on how you can get this. And this has to be through the life cycle. Now, it's very, very difficult to understand the life cycle of giant squid. Again, we can't observe them mating, we can't observe what's happening. We do know, however, that they, the adults live deep and we know that the young seem to come up to the surface and they're, they're, you know, they're floating around the surface. So what we speculate happens is that the adults mate somewhere in the deep. They have their, their giant squid sex frenzy. And then at this point, the, the young must come up to the surface either as eggs or as, as larvae. And then we speculate that they probably drift around the global currents at this point, happily living at the surface, eating whatever they eat. And they drift in the covenants until they get big enough to actually want to dive down deep again. So wherever they are at that point, they're big enough, they dive down deep into the local deep water, rich food zone, and that's where it all starts again.